We're back with you, and we're going to take a look at our grain market activity here. We'll start with the corn. And on the corn market, we had gains of several cents earlier this morning. But right now, we are coming at the other side of a temporary sell-off during the course of the day. It went down there and tested the unchanged to slightly negative territory and now we're bouncing off of that a little bit we have may now up a penny again at 377 and a quarter and we have december now a half higher at 399 and a quarter right now had been as high as 401 and three quarters but uh, slipped off of that uh, early in the trading session here now let's get you updated on our soybean market and on the soybean trade today uh, we now have the may contract down six and a half cents we're trading at 904 per bushel still a penny off of our low of the day we are a full eight cents cents off of our high overnight now in july we're down seven cents in november the new crop month for soybeans we're down seven cents at 937 and three quarters <clears throat> let's take a look at our wheat market and get you updated here as well now in chicago wheat we currently have the may contract a quarter of a cent higher at 466 and three quarters we have the july contract also a quarter of a cent higher at 471 and three quarters so that has seen about six and a half cents of its earlier gains evaporate rate. Uh, it is off of its earlier low here by about three cents. Now in Kansas City wheat, we have the May contract currently trading too lower at 445 at seven cents off of its overnight high. Uh, July down two at 453 and a quarter. On the Minneapolis spring wheat trade, we have the May contract down two at 569 and a quarter. July down a couple of cents as well. In the cotton, we have the May contract uh, currently showing a trade of 7660, which would be down 58 points, while December down six at 7 7527 per pound. I'm going to go to the trading floor in Chicago and talk with Scott Geekus of Walsh Trading about what's going on in the grain markets here. We had an overnight sale of 300,000 tons of corn. It went to China, but the market doesn't seem to be overly enthused about that news. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, it's, it's a very weird dynamic right now. This is the first time in a long time that Weather is being the main focus. It's no longer the trade war talks. Even though that we did have a little bit of positive news with the trade war talks, uh, Trump came out this morning, did say that it's probably going to happen. Whatever that means, no one has any idea. Uh, just waiting to see what headlines coming out. But definitely what is driving these markets as of lately is definitely the weather, the flooding, colder than normal, very, very large amount of moisture. It's starting to affect the crops one way or the other. What the interesting thing that it sparks my attention and really stands out is when you look at the soybean market and you look at the corn market, we have the upside option volatility is a little bit higher to the call side. Uh, soybeans is roughly about $2 uh, more premium than the downside puts. Corn's about a dollar and a half to a dollar 75 premium to puts. But with the wheat market, the puts are definitely a little bit more skewed to the put side, which is a little bit odd. So we have a large short position in pretty much all the grains across the board uh, with the stronger move higher, with the weather taking a bigger effect in these markets. With corn and soybeans, you can definitely see that people are paying up to protect you know, a little bit more upside movement. With the wheat, they're willing to pay a little bit more for the downside protection. That's interesting. So the, in your opinion, the trade seems to have a, a biased opinion that they think wheat has more potential to go down then from here. Uh, that's what the option flow is, is dictating to us right now. All right. Interesting stuff. Uh, Scott, hold that thought. We'll come back here in a moment and we'll talk about the livestock trade as well here on the Friday. Lots of uh, exciting trade going on over there, to say the least, and we'll talk about it when we come back. We are talking with Scott Geekus of Walsh Trading. He is located at the edge of the trading floor in Chicago, talking with us right now, and we're going to focus now on livestock. And first off, let's look at our futures here, Scott, and let's get your thought on this. On the cattle market today, we have the live cattle now trading mainly higher, not everywhere, but April is down a dime. June is up a nickel. It's at 123.95. The August is up 28. It's interesting where you have the far out deferreds into next fall showing the most strength. Uh, relative to the nearbys, but they are at a discounted price, though. Now, if you look at the feeder cattle market, here you have the uh, April contract now back to half a dollar higher at 149.43, and this is after it posted a low of 147.88. So a quick turnaround there off of the lows. We're back within about a dollar forty of our high of the day at this point. Uh, May now 50 higher at 154.50. Quite a wide trading range here in the feeders today. If you look at the lean hogs, now in the lean hog market, you have the April 
gold back to 40 higher at 78.72. And that's after going as low as 75.88. We have the May 85 higher at 87.45. June now 97 higher. And July is up a buck and a half. August up a dollar 58. So uh, big, big swings here in the lean hog trade once again. Uh, this is on the heels of, uh, well, expanded limits yesterday. So I guess they're still in effect today, Scott, right? Yeah, that's definitely for sure. So with the cattle market in particular, weather's definitely driving the market. Uh, a lot of muddy pastures, driving weights down slightly, um, but more or less with the weather, it's still a bullish catalyst. Supply is definitely still remaining strong where it's usually supposed to be pulling back right now. It's still there. Uh, we're keeping an eye on that 129 level. What I find that's interesting as far as the option flow goes is I've been always talking about the la for the last uh, month or so about the 130 line, the 130 calls. They have been building and building. Uh, within this week, we've seen a drop off of the open interest, about 3,500 contracts. So people are starting to take that off. They are starting to build on the 132 calls. However, they are starting to have a large position starting to build into 128 puts, about 3,200 open interest as of this morning. So we're going to keep an eye on that. Uh, what that is saying that it's it's a two-sided trade. Um, there might be hitting certain tops here and we might be at an exhaustion point. So we're just going to keep an eye on that 129 level for confirmation if the trend does reverse. As far as the hogs go, you know, it's in just a runaway train to the upside. You know, the Chinese prices are definitely driving port, U.S. port prices. That uh, import campaign is starting to materialize. What is really interesting is China is still buying U.S. pork with these high tariffs. So it is definitely they need it. It's no longer of a want or wait and see how this is all going to play out. They need U.S. pork. They're starting to buy it. And that's why you're seeing a big ramp up in hog prices. In your opinion, Scott, with that case of PED discovered in Oklahoma in, uh, at a youth livestock show there in the hogs, what potential impact could that have on the market, if any? Well, I mean, we got to wait and see how, yeah, we're going to have to see how that's going to really play out. Um, you know, if the farmers have to spend a little bit more money to protect their herd and so forth, their overhead increases. So we're going to see how that plays out in the long run. Scott, good to visit with you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Scott uh, Geekus, he is with Walsh Trading. He's located there in Chicago. Hope you have a great weekend, Scott. Thank you for the help. Interesting stuff. Interesting day Very on the markets. Day. Yeah. yeah, looking forward to seeing what happens as we get closer to the close. Thank We're you, Markets Editor Marlon Bowling.